The responsibility of every leadership is to inspire hope. National Working Committee of All Progressives Congress meets with President Muhammad Buhari, reassures Nigerians of a sustainable future. Corruption has now been driven under the table and that the corrupt ones can no longer flood the process of their corruption the way they used to do in the past. Information Minister Lai Muhammad updates Nigerians on the fight against corruption. One hundred and sixty five rescued and more destruction of Boko Haram enclaves as security forces hit hard on insurgents. I came actually dressed prepared for it to avoid any stories that touches. Hamilton cold intensifies in jars, weather predicted to be as low as six degrees Celsius. Hello, a lovely evening to you and welcome to the news on the network service of the NTA. I am Joseph Johnson in Abuja. With me from Lagos is Dotu Nogoyemi, Dibabari Siodomaweke in Port Tarkat, and Sadia Umar Digi in Sokoto will join us in the course of this telecast. Let's get to it then. The national chairman of the APC, Adam Soshomale, has described the New Year message by President Muhammad Buhari to Nigerians as not only significant, but reassuring that the nation's upward trajectory for sustainable future is no fluke. Mr. Oshomale stated this after leading some members of the National Working Committee of the party to an audience with the president. State House correspondent Adam Sambo reports. The audience with the national leadership of the governing APC was the first formal engagement by President Muhammad Buhari in the year 2020. The APC chieftains were in the State House to show appreciation to the Nigerian leader for ushering the nation into the new year and new decade with renewed hope for a better Nigeria as contained in his first formal letter to his countrymen. The responsibility of every leadership is to inspire hope, explaining periodically what he is doing, what he's going to do differently, and what he hopes to accomplish within a given time. And the president has said, even as I'm not going to contest again, I owe this country obligation to clean up the electoral process based on observed gaps and weaknesses here and there, so that I'll be leaving behind a legacy of free, fair, and credible elections. So we, we came essentially to assure the president that most well-meaning Nigerians are with him. They appreciate the hope. And the challenge now is to work hard to ensure that all of those promises that he has made, he will deliver in 2020, that we keep our word, because our word must be our bond with the people of Nigeria in our shared commitment to take Nigeria to the next level. All members of APC, rank and file and leadership level, must find time to reflect and contribute ideas on how to ensure that by this time, 2021, we'll be able to look back and say, President said I will deliver on X, Y, Z. At the end of the day, he did. And then we have a message for 2021. The APC national chairman used the opportunity to commend President Buhari for his courage to put Nigeria first before any other sentiment in the execution of his mandate. Consistently under this president, people are now used to going for Christmas without having to worry whether or not there is petroleum products in the market. I also think that we ought to celebrate the fact that we are able to celebrate Christmas and New Year and people have rice everywhere that were not imported from other countries. Nigerian made rice. Mr. Oshomale, who presented a season's greeting card to the president, reassured the nation that in the year 2020, the governing APC will not only be stronger, but more coherent and peaceful. From the State House, Adamusambu, NTA News.
Meanwhile, the federal government's anti-corruption crusade is steadily gaining momentum as a number of high-profile convictions have been recorded. This was contained in a brief by the Information and Culture Minister, Lai Mohammed. Anthony Fawson has more. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, the Information and Culture Minister, Lai Mohammed, said it secured 890 convictions, standing as the highest anywhere in the world. This is against 2015, 103 convictions, 2016, 189 convictions, 2017, 190 convictions, and 2018, 202. The high rate of convictions in 2019 is in addition to the billions of Naira in looted funds that have been recovered by the EFCC. On its part, the Independent Corrupt Practices Commission, ICPC, has launched a novel project of tracking the huge resources allocated to constituency projects over the years, starting with the education and health sectors, a move the minister stressed has forced contractors back to project sites they had abandoned. While the Wahala Day app, a one-stop shop for daily information from ICPC and for Nigerians to report acts of corruption, has also been launched by the commission. This is not the first time Nigeria is fighting the canker worm of corruption. But it's the first time that the fight is being backed and sustained by a strong political will, with a president renowned for his honor, dignity, and incorruptibility, personally leading the fight. And that is making all the difference. I've also said that while the war against corruption is still a war in progress, it is also fair to say that corruption has now been driven under the table and that the corrupt ones can no longer flaunt the process of their corruption the way they used to do in the past. On security, Laya Mohammed reiterated that the gallantry of the nation's men and women in uniform was stepped up in the fight against insurgency despite the fact that they are fighting the rump of Boko Haram as well as ISWAP. It is important that we as citizens do not say or do anything to demoralize the gallant troops who are fighting to keep us safe. Let us remember them in our prayers and give them our support always rather than sniping at them. Terrorism is not just a Nigerian problem. It's a global problem. It has global ramifications. The ongoing border drill, the minister said, is undoubtedly one of the boldest decisions ever taken by any administration in Nigeria as part of measures to secure the nation's land and marine borders. For clarity, the ECOWAS protocol on transit demands that when a transit container bats at a seaport, the receiving country is mandated to escort the same without tampering with the sales to the border of the destination country. Unfortunately, experience has shown that our neighbors do not comply with this protocol. Critical infrastructure on its part, the minister said, this administration has remained consistent in terms of developing the sector. Lai Mohammed added that most heartwarming is the signing into law the amended Deep Offshore Act by President Muhammad Buhari. With the year 2019 remaining as a momentous year, the President Muhammad Buhari-led administration has indeed taken Nigeria closer to the next level target. Anthony Fawson, NTA News. Although 2019 was an election year for Nigeria, the business of governance and implementation of policies and programs of the federal government did not suffer neglect, unlike the case in previous general election years. Mitari then gives us highlights of the activities of the Office of the Secretary to the Government of the Federation in 2019. The reappointment of Boss Mustafa as Secretary to the Government of the Federation set in motion continuation of activities in the Presidency and consolidation of the next level agenda. In the course of the year under review, the Office of the Secretary to the Government of the Federation successfully coordinated major national events such as the Presidential Inauguration, the Made in June 12 Democracy Day occasion, as well as Nigeria's 59th Independence Day ceremonies. 
It organized an induction retreat for ministers, federal permanent secretaries, and top government functionaries to acquaint them with status reports on crucial policies, programs, and projects, as well as key performance indicators of the Buhari administration to enable them pull together in service delivery. This call to service requires all of us to fully share in the president's vision and agenda for our country. Two national youth entrepreneurship and empowerment summits were organized by the SGF's office in 2019 to harness the abilities of Nigerian youths in the ICT and creative industries. 20 selected youth entrepreneurs were given 1 million naira each as cash prizes from the federal government. This is living proof now that yes, this government actually has plans for we youths and their policies in place to make things work. We'll be coached concerning how not to waste the money and how to use, put the money into our business in the most effective way. Also in 2019, the SGF boss Mustafa on behalf of President Muhammadu Buhari waded into the age-long Tiv Jukun crisis. He moderated a peace meeting among stakeholders from Taraba and Benue states who agreed to cease hostilities in Taraba state to pave way for peace building efforts. There is nothing like peace. Peace is power. And I think me and you, we are very capable of solving this problem. We would stand with you. We would do everything within the instrumentality of government facilities and actions that are supposed to be taken. Regular meetings and interface between the SGF and the leadership of the National Assembly complemented concerted efforts to enhance executive legislative relationship in the outgoing year. The office supervised numerous ecological projects nationwide, including the establishment of a central influent treatment plant for the industrial areas in Kano State to address long-standing ecological and pollution challenges. The government uh, has really done so much to take the Kano people out of this. The SGF received reports of several committees on key reforms, including the report on strengthening internal security framework and community policing in Nigeria with assurances that government has the political will for implementation. In Abuja, Mitaire, Ikben, NTA News. Let's take you to Enugu State because the Minister of Aviation, Hadi Sirika, says the earlier stipulated deadline for the completion of rehabilitation works at the Akani Biam International Airport, Enugu, is feasible given the level of work done so far. He was speaking while taking an inspection tour of the airport. Chinyane Uwoye reports. Inspecting the level of work done at the runway of the airport in company of some officials of the Federal Airports Authority of Nigeria, FAN, Enugu State Governor, and some members of the State Executive Council and National Assembly, the minister expressed satisfaction with the level of work done so far. He acknowledged the support of the Enugu State Government and the National Assembly towards the project and appealed to users of the airport to be patient as the closure is in the overall interest of the public. And we are satisfied that the contractor is capable and competent enough to deliver this procurement. By our program of work, we will be delivering this runway, God willing, before Easter. Enugu State Governor, represented by his deputy as well as the Chairman, House Committee on Aviation, promised continued collaboration and proper oversighting of the work to ensure efficiency. The state will do all we need to do to make this thing work because we know it's important. I also believe that um, the the time or before Easter should also be achieved, not just about the Nugu but about the Southeast and the environs. The rehabilitation work, according to the minister, goes beyond the extension of the runway to include airfield lighting to allow for day and night operations. The minister also noted that, in addition, President Muhammadu Buhari has promised to fund the new international terminal building in Enugu, Chineyangoye, NTA News. And following concerns of motorists plying the Ajal Kutai Tobe Bridge, which currently has a wide gap in one of the sections of the bridge, the Federal Controller of Works, Kogi State, Jimu Kajobola, says a team of engineers are being dispatched to the area to ascertain the immediate and remote causes of the problem and to replace the metal plates on the bridge. Kajobola, who was speaking to NTA in a phone call, said there was no cause for worry and that the bridge is stable and it's not collapsing.
He adds that the joints are normal intersections on the bridge and that traffic has been diverted until the completion of work. Let's turn our attention now to the judiciary, where the Federal Capital Territory High Court, sitting in Maitama, has granted the application of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission to extend the detention of the former Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice, Mohamed Bello Adoke San, in its custody. The vacation judge, Justice Othman Musa, gave the order, having taken a look at the ex parte application brought before the court by the AFCC counsel, Aisha Habib. The order is to keep the former Minister of Justice for additional 14 days pending his arraignment. The former Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice, Mohamed Bello San, was arrested for alleged abuse of office and involvement in Malabu oil deal. Up ahead, Update on Pape Bank robbery in Abuja. Stay with us. Hey, hey, I said the bread don't take time finish. Push! Oh, ah, when they're supposed to buy for it, they will not buy. We look here, we look here. It's still that same 200 naira for it. We still buy. Okay, 200. You can put your usual bit. Yes, but you go add 888. Join our move. It's a big Is it not 200 you give that lady? Eh, uh, na, 888 is that. 888, na, the new a wolf. Recharge with star 888 star pin hash to enjoy five times a wolf from MTN to call any network. You fit also enjoy a month of fit to you. Just ask your vendor for a wolf for you. Konoto, where my dinner is? Office man. You don't forget money, sir. Oh, forget, get. Forget. You go even hide 888. Join that shit. Give my sister. About them. No beauty cloth, this sewing machine they make. If you put food for your table and roof over person head, can you go on Bonge fashion show around the world? Find the cocoa inside every story. Go bbc.com slash pigeon to see more of your world. What's you? Who's it? Who's it? Any gift want to smile, make I follow up. It's what's you, your former driver. <laughs> <laughs> With my Glow 4G, I can now upload my cars online, sell, and make plenty, plenty profit. That's what they call me now, mommy. The new mega online car dealer. What's you? Right now, when the iron is hot. See, my mommy won't be like Shaki. That will come and meet you specially and bring one big wine for you. Why you won't see me? Say, uh, your daughter. I want to marry her. You know where? I've been wanting to know the Lorien. The family, do them. Hello? When Glow 4G day of you, confidence must be body. Data is oxygen. Glow 4G, the new speed of life. Your number one 4G network nationwide. The very best from Glow, the grandmasters of data. Telemundo new series. Meet Antonio. He has everything except a happy family. And Julieta, she has a dream man. Or is he a nightmare? <laughs> Fall in love with Telemundo's new romantic comedy. It will sweep you off your feet. A Telemundo new series, almost yours. Coming this January. This is watching NTN Network News with me, Joseph Johnson in Abuja. Now let's bring you an update of the Mpape Bank robbery. In a twist of development, the suspected banker, Larry Ehizo, who was accused of allegedly being the mastermind of last Saturday's Ford Mpape Bank robbery, uh, that's in First Bank, has turned around to say that the last member of the syndicate, Ernest Wim, who the police said was on the run, did not threaten him into the robbery operation. He spoke to correspondent Ilyasu Onotu Yakubu after the last suspect was apprehended by the FCT Police Command. 29-year-old Ernest Ewim, a hotel manager and barman at Katampe in Abuja, said he is a customer of the bank whose accounts had a challenge and went to the branch of the bank to lay complaints. He said, coincidentally, Larry Ehizo was the one who attended to him at the bank and subsequently kept contact, which led to last Saturday's bank robbery. 
He now said that he wants to give me work in the bank. And I said, which kind of work? He said he want me to he said he want to attack bank. First bank in Papi Omaraba. And I said, ah, is it this one the work you are talking about? No, I'm not a thief. I'm not a robber. He now asked me if I can provide people for him. I said, no, I don't know anybody like that. I said, I don't know anybody like that. So, well, I'm, I'm working in Katampe. I know this prince in Katampe as a photographer. But yet, the kind of things I've been hearing about him, that he's a stubborn person, he used to fight, he's caught his... Confirming Ernest's claim, Larry Ehizu said, Contrary to his earlier claims, Ernest never threatened him into being part of the robbery operation. Everything apart from some that he said was true. I did not, he didn't threaten me. I willingly collected his number. When I called him and said I should give him two days, I should give him a few days. He was not forthcoming, I still called him. But he said he wants me to meet with um, Prince Will, uh, first of all. Because he knows him as an ex-soldier and he feels his son that it will be game. The FCT police command in a press statement explained that the arrest of the fleeing suspect is an indication that the command will not waver in its commitment to ensure protection of lives and property in the territory. The suspects will be arraigned in court on conclusion of investigation. Ilyasu Onoto Yakubo, NTA News. Well, we hope to bring you more updates as they unfold. Troops of the Operation Lafayette Dole and the Multinational Joint Task Force rescue 165 victims from Boko Haram captivity. A statement by the Nigerian Army Operations Media Coordinator, Colonel Aminu Ilyasu, indicates that the victims, mostly women and children, were liberated during a clearance operations in northern Barunu. Colonel Ilyasu notes that 75 suspected terrorists were arrested, others killed, arms and 15 cars recovered during the encounter. Similarly, repentant militias in Lantang North and South local government areas of Latu State have surrendered several arms to troops of forward operation base in Shendam, Latu State. And several Boko Haram terrorists have been neutralized and some structures in their camp at Abulam in the Sambisa forest area of Baruna State have been destroyed in airstrikes conducted by the Air Task Force of Operation Lafayette Dole. A statement by the Nigerian Air Force revealed that the mission marked the commencement of Operation Rattlesnake 2, an air interdiction operation aimed at taking out some identified insurgent camps and logistics facilities in in order to further unhinge the terrorist center of gravity and diminish their fighting capability. Abu Lam was attacked based on credible intelligence reports indicating that the terrorists had resumed using the once abandoned settlement as a staging point from where the launch attacks against on-ground troops locations. It would be recalled that mid-December 2019, the Nigerian Air Force planned and executed the highly successful Operation Rattlesnake 1. Operation Rattlesnake 2 is planned to consolidate the gains of the earlier operation and shape the battle space for further air and ground operations. So talking to Martis, 2019 has been a checkered year for the Nigeria Police Force, recording successes in the fight against crime and criminality, and also grappling with some challenges. Francis from uh, reviews the Nigeria Police Force in 2019. The Nigeria Police Force started the year with Ibrahim Kotun Idris as the IGP. But barely a fortnight into the year, Mohamed Adamu took over on the 16th of January 2019. It was a time Nigeria was not only preparing for general election, but also grappling with the internal security challenges of threats of kidnapping, armed robbery, banditry, and communal violence across many parts of the country. Operation Puff Ada was launched in April as an operational intervention blueprint to stabilize the internal security space. 
Abuja Kaduna Expressway was completely unpassable when we came. Today, that road has become a very safe corridor. Puff Ada, after Edmonds had arrested about 6,531 high-profile suspects, comprising 2,627 armed robbery suspects, 1,621 suspected cultists, 1,527 kidnapped suspects, and 758 murder suspects. We did not only demystify them, we successfully reclaimed the public space from them, and deny them the liberty to attack citizens at will without fear of a superior response from gallant operatives of the Nigeria police. We might not have gotten to the promised land, but the good news is that we are out of the wilderness and we are very close to the promised land. 2019 also see the re-established of the Ministry of Police Affairs by the federal government to, among other things, initiate formulate and implement policies and programs relating to policing and internal security. The ministry under my watch will work tirelessly to ensure that we get the funding the police needs and we will also inject new ideas into policing of our na their nation. Welfare of officers and men of the police also took center stage with the Inspector General of Police addressing abuses associated with promotion, making merits to be the only criteria. Officers are now motivated more than ever before to perform their duties, assured that they shall be rewarded within the dictates of our traditional policing standards. Training and retraining of policemen and women to enhance their knowledge and improve performance with a view to attaining policing in the 21st century was prioritized in the year under review. Barely a few weeks to the end of the year, President Muhammadu Buhari inaugurated new sets of policing assets and National Command and Control Headquarters and the Police Crime and Incident Database Center. The Inspector General of Police, Mohamed Adamu, at the end of the year conference with strategic police officers, stresses that improving the overall efficiency of the police through capacity building in policing technology, intelligence, investigation, prosecution, as well as crime prevention will top the agenda of the force in 2020. In Abuja, Francis from NTA News. In other news, the humanitarian services of the First Lady Aisha Tubuhari under the Future Short Program has reached out to pregnant women and other patients in five hospitals of Jigawa State. Hawa Haliru Haruna has details. The First Lady, Mrs. Aisha Buhari, who was represented by her personal assistant, Hambarut Sanwali, was in five local governments of Jigawa State to distribute the provision packs. Patients in Kazaure, Miga, Roni, Viwa, Enkwashi, and Dusa hospitals benefited from the gesture. She said the support is to relieve their suffering and call on other well-to-do individuals to inculcate the habit of giving. Jigawa State Commissioner for Women Affairs, Yelwada U, and some beneficiaries expressed appreciation for the First Lady's support. Uh, she purposely uh, made this for women and children because they are her top priority. So it is her brainchild. This is what she's been doing and it's not only now that she has brought something to Jigawa State. The Future Assured Program has been distributing such items to patients in the hospitals and less privileged. From Duzi, Hawa Haler Haruna, NTA News. Dotun in Lagos is ready with some stories from that access. Dotun? Thank you, Joseph, and welcome to Lagos. Official statistics released by the Lagos State Emergency Management Agency shows that there were more collapsed buildings and fire outbreaks in the state in 2019 as against previous years, with scores of deaths and millions of property lost. Kenny Bilge takes a look at measures put in place by concerned authorities to prevent reoccurrence in the year 2020, as well as situation reports from some of the affected areas. 
Perhaps the fire that gutted this building in Balogu Market, three-story building at Itafaji, residential building at Global Road, Ikoi, another two-story building at Mercy Street in Lagos, and several other areas in the state could be regarded as major disasters that occurred in Lagos in 2019. A visit to these affected areas after several months the incident occurred showed that the people in the affected areas have moved on with their lives. I hear don't burn. We just try because we don't get another business to do uh, with the manager. I can tell you that we just manage. Business no fix. Deployment of professionals and adherence to best global practices in building construction are some measures adopted by concerned authorities and professionals in reducing disasters in the state. Digitalization, advocacy to all corners, changing the people orientation. The government has done its own because right now if you are building, you are expected to have a fire certificate. You are expected to have to be sure that there is a building control to be sure that you have your structural the structure of the building is stable, but we circumvent a lot. While government is making efforts to ensure that there is quality control in construction, developers, on the other hand, have been challenged not to be dubious in the discharge of their duties. In Lagos, Ken Igbeluge, NTA News. Public holidays and major season's festivities may be over in Lagos, but the ambience in the state is relatively hustle and bustle free. Abalero Barao, who went round town, filed this report. The smooth, easy ride experienced by me today after the public holidays is clear indication that most Lagos residents that traveled out of the state for holidays are not back. Major roads in the state noted for traffic jams are devoid of the usual heavy vehicular movement that characterize them. There's more breathing space. There's more here in Lagos and uh, there are little people, you understand, like people have traveled and that we, I think it's better now than then. I keep on praying that we will be like this and the present government should try and make sure that Lagos will be like this. At least when you, if you are coming to work and you wake up and get to the road, you will be happy to come to work. But like last week, last two weeks, man, when you wake up to come to work, you will always decide that, man, I feel like I'm going to work, but you must go to work because mom was survive. Just came from uh, Amu World of here and in less than two minutes we are here. So it was, I wish Lagos can be like this all the time, <laughs> just like in Abuja. Although buying and selling are happening daily at markets in the state, many offices and shops are still closed for the New Year celebrations. Um, right now Lagos is somehow boring because people have traveled. As you can see the road is free, most of the shops are closed and uh, it's just because of the holidays. It is expected that normal activities will return to Lagos State after the weekend in Lagos, Abola Reobara, NTA News. And that's our contribution from Lagos. Network News continues after this time out. Please stay tuned. Boya, ya take, madame, ibo. So, you now want to pick my call? Then bomb me where? Mommy of life. Try the mommy. Where my car? Mommy, now smart things remain. If my car is not ready, it's not for tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, you go put leg this I want trouser. Why well, lie? Cross my phone. Yes, ma, yes, ma, yes, ma. Look at this phone. No. All right, so. yes, ma. Hey, my girl, my girl, my jackini. Mommy, don't be you. Don't waste your credit. When I finish, I go call. You call me. <laughs> me, where my middle name, na credit. Where glow they give me, boku, boku. Glow. Get five times your recharge to call all networks. Recharge with star triple five star pin. This talk talk people. I bet give me a phone, make a go, Joe. White grape, peach variants, the letter sparkling fruit drink. Celebrate every moment. The 
They swore an oath to serve our fatherland and defend the people that traded their freedom, comfortable homes and mortgaged their lives on the battleground for our unity and peaceful living. These are the great, fearless, loyal and committed Nigerian armed forces who risked their lives courageously to safeguard our borders. But in the line of duty, many never returned. Nigerians, arise, let's celebrate our fallen heroes. Put on the remembrance emblem with pride to support the incapacity and families of our fallen heroes. It is indeed befitting to honor the memory of the gallant author of the men who paid his refusal to keep the President Muhammad Buhari enjoins all ministries, parastatals, religious and corporate bodies to donate generously to the Emblem Appeal Lounge. Send your donations to these accounts. Account name, Emblem Appeal Lounge. Account number, 393-200-7526. Ecobank Nigeria PLC. We have come to the end of another successful year and we wish to appreciate all those that mean so much to us. Our sponsors, our clients, government at all levels, corporate bodies, advertisers, religious bodies, civil society groups, political parties, and above all, you, our esteemed viewer. Together, we made 2019 great. Together, we shall make 2020 even greater. That is why we say thank you. This is wishing you a Merry Christmas and a prosperous New Year. You're still watching NTN Network News and we are back in Abuja. Guess what? Haven't spent heavily after the week-long Christmas celebration and other activities in the new year. Something is switching the mood of federal workers and that is the payment of the arrears of the minimum wage. Of course, you know it is the new minimum wage. This has attracted commendation of President Muhammadu Buhari by Nigerian workers. Emmanuel Ayimiru sampled the mood of workers at the moment. When President Muhammadu Buhari signed the new minimum wage into law in April last year and assured federal civil servant of the payment before the last day of 2019, some federal civil servants expressed let, concern let about the realization of this gesture. However, today, the backlog like a saving grace for many. They tried because <laughs> when uh, we heard that they were going to pay, we were not so sure what so it's going to be, but later on we found out that it was true. So it's very commendable. The federal government have fulfilled their promises. They promised to pay the arrears, the new salary and the arrears in December, which they did. I received my own last week. That is the arrears of about 140 something. And majority of us have gotten in my ministry, Ministry of Science and Technology, majority of us, about 90%. So we want to appreciate Mr. President for his job well done. Today everybody is smiling. It's going to be part of what I'm going to use to pay for my 2000, uh, 2020 accommodation. For the likes of Olushola, the smile on her face tells it all. Already the salary was spent even before it came. So people were very happy having that extra to themselves to do some other things. Everybody has done their own enjoyment. They spend a lot and when they start receiving this money to help them in paying their children's school fees and all. States that have not uh, actually done so should also fulfill their promise as well. Now that the federal workers are enjoying the new minimum wage, there are high expectations from the labor cycle for the state governments to tow the line of the federal government for the implementation of the new minimum behind. wage. Emmanuel Ayemiro, NTN News. Quite a mood uh, switch it is, isn't it? The Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, has recently reviewed charges, fees, and also issued new guidelines for banking services in Nigeria. In view of this, Nigerians are hopeful that this will drive financial inclusion by providing efficient transaction options and greater reach. Uraritam reports. In furtherance of Central Bank of Nigeria's quest to make financial services more accessible and affordable to various stakeholders, the bank introduces new policies that will take effect from January 2020. Among the new policies are reduction of the withdrawal fee charged for the use of bank's automated teller machine, ATM, to 35 Naira, as against the 65 Naira usually deducted after a third monthly transaction. 
cards linked to savings accounts, the maintenance fee had been reduced to a maximum fee of 50 naira per quarter from 50 naira per month. These policies prompted reactions from Nigerians. I appreciate the CBN for what they have tried to do, but on my own thinking, I think they should remove all the charges. If the central bank will, you know, do what they have said, I personally will appreciate it. On debit card charges, the new guidelines stipulated that a one-off charge of 1,000 naira applied to the issuance of cards irrespective of type. Operating current account and COT is being taken from me from every payment being made into my account and every deduction being made. I want to say that government should do something to wipe it out completely. Nigerians believe these policies, if implemented by financial institutions, will help the country align with market development. In Uyo, Uduak Etam, NTN News. Time now to join the Babari in Port Harcourt Center for more reports on the network news. Deba, Happy New Year. Hello, Joseph, and welcome to Port Harcourt. The need for every state of the Federation to work for the unity of the country was at the center of Governor Yesenwiki's speech at a New Year banquet held in Government House, Port Harcourt. Okay. It reports that two seven governors from the north attended the banquet. The need for Project Nigeria to preoccupy every patriotic Nigerian cannot be overemphasized at this time in the life of the nation. Governor Wike called on Rivers people to come together to advance the cause of development in the state and the nation. Rivers State has been key to the unity of this country. And nobody will take it away from us. We believe in the unity of Nigeria. But believe in the unity of Nigeria, give us what belongs to us. It is indeed always a pleasure and pleasing for me to be here in River State, rivers of peace, rivers of tranquility, rivers of harmony, rivers of possibilities, that is also holding the balance of power in Nigeria. And because of the bridges of harmony and peace and articulations of issues on national relevance, he has made a name not only for himself, but for Rivers and for our generation. Stand up comedians were on hand to treat the people to read cracking jokes, complemented by dance and musical performances. High point was the cutting of the immediate cake. In Port Harcourt, Oge Diniego, NTA News. Later development, Akwaibo State Governor Udom Emmanuel has re-emphasized the need for the people to remain united and peaceful. Susanna Sukwa reports that the governor was saying this at a solemn assembly held at Ibom Hall Grounds, Uyo. The Akwaibo State Solemn Assembly, which is held on the second day of every new year, is always an opportunity for the government and people of the state to appreciate God for the previous year, as well as rededicate the state and people to God in the new year. The 2020 State Salem Assembly, held at the Boom Hall Ground, CEO, featured praise and dances to glorify God for keeping the state united, despite the tension that preceded the 2019 general elections. Governor Dom Emmanuel said the state and the people have many reasons to thank God, noting that irrespective of tongue and tribe, a Kwaibom state remains one and a united entity. He cautioned those who may want to use politics to cause disunity in the state to desist from it. I speak by the order of the higher authority that a Kwaibom land is dedicated to God Almighty. The officiating minister, Reverend M.M. Jacob, who preached on the theme Divine Favor, emphasized that in 2020, God will send help to his people. If you can just stretch your faith to me in 2020, the impossible thing will become possible. The event featured prayers for the state and Nigeria, the leaders, unity and peace, as well as divine direction for year 2020.
With the theme, Divine Favor for the year 2020, Governor Odom Emmanuel says a Kwaibom state is indeed in for better days. From the Bom Hall grounds, you, Susan Asukwa, NTA News. And as our bid from Port Harcourt is back to Joseph for the rest of the news. Happy New Year to you, Joseph. The Barbary from our Port Harcourt Network Center there. As the Hamilton Code intensifies, residents of JAWS, including visitors, seem prepared for the weather with temperature expected to come down to as low as 6 degrees later tonight. Saadatu Mohammed Kafa went around the city in the early hours of today to see how people are coping with the cold. Residents of Joss woke up this morning with an intense cold weather, which according to the Nigerian Meteorological Agency is at 9 degrees. As funny or crazy those dressings may be, it is all in a bid to shield themselves from cold. The weather is very, very cold. So there's nothing we can do with this the time. While residents of Joss are lamenting over the harsh weather, dealers, on the other hand, are taking the opportunity to make bricks business. Yeah. The people that are buying cloth, uh, uh, Amatan cloth, they are buying it more than the pasta season. The cold weather associated to Plateau State perhaps is common among residents, but for those visiting for the first time, welcome to Joss. Saada to Mohamed Kafa, NTA News. Let's just show you some colorful pictures because the uniqueness of Nasara Estate is in its cultural diversities. To this end, a festival is in progress in Lafia, showcasing the heritage of the people towards promoting unity and understanding. Ali Utijani Muhammad reports. Communities across the 30 local government areas of the state and specialized groups are attending. The fact that people participate in the event is an expression of willingness to forge ahead in unity and understanding in tandem with dreams of founding fathers. While many applaud the initiative, Governor Abdullah Hisuli on his part says government will continue to support organizers to bring people together for harmonious coexistence. So it's an opportunity that we are displaying our cultures, very rich cultures that we have in Nassau State to the outside world. So I thank you for coming up with these ideas that we should have an event like this. He says government will support youths in various vocations for self-sufficiency. In Lafia, Ali Utijani Mohamed, NTE News. Well, just stay with us here on the Network News and back shortly. Today of all days, when my girls won't come visit, my niece, they come go expire. Oh, but my guys, they can't follow me watch this match. I must want to fold the hand. Hey! Hey, Bilo! Hey! What's happening now? Sorry to disappoint you, but my subscription don't expire. The match is not on my GoTV package. Now you all be that. I beg, give me your phone. I think I show you how you go take Dua for my GoTV app for your phone. Life is so much easier with my GoTV app. Make payments, clear error messages, change wow. your package. You can also check your due dates and keep abreast wow. of your payment history. Ah. Oh. The new My Go TV app is everything you need in one place. So what are you waiting for? Download My Go TV app now from Google Play or App Store to enjoy the easy life. Go TV, live it, love it. Really, with total submission to the will of God Almighty, we, the family of Oloha Okoli Abo Chukudoro of Uli, Ihiala Local Government Area, Anambra State, announce the passing on to glory of our father, grandfather, great grandfather, brother and uncle, Ogwehi Mwadike Alabuche Okoli Abo is in Goladi. Burial arrangements are as follows. Thursday, 2nd January 2020, night of tribute and wake keep at his compound, that's Umoma Uli. Friday, 3rd January, body leaves our Lady of Laws Mortuary to his compound, that's Umoma Uli. In state at 8 a.m. At 10 a.m., funeral mass at Sacred Heart Parish, Umar Mahmoud. Interment follows immediately at his compound. Saturday, 4th January, 10 a.m., condolence visit continues. Sunday, 5th January, 2020, outing service at Sacred Heart Parish, Uli, Ihiala, local government area. Time, 8 a.m., signed by Silva Okole Abo, FCA, son for the family. Let's 
join Sadia in Sokoto for a few more stories. Joseph, welcome to Sokoto. In Zafora State, more than 1,000 households have benefited from the replacement of high-power consuming bulbs with the lower ones recently embarked upon by the Energy Commission of Nigeria. This forms part of the sensitization campaign organized by the Commission in Kusau, the state capital. Salama to Umar reports. Despite the availability of resources like water, sunlight and wind that could be utilized to produce electricity, Nigerians have continued to suffer from shortage of power, which always hampers a lot of socio-economic activities. The Energy Commission of Nigeria embarked on sensitization campaign to the six geopolitical zones of the country to create awareness on the need to make judicious use of the available energy in the country. Use of low energy consumption bulbs in houses and other public buildings will assist in ensuring that the limited megawatts generated covers the whole consumers in the country. We also provided three 1,000 number LED bulbs to replace the incandescent lamps that have been used. Federal Government Girls College Guso was presented with 500 low energy consuming bulbs. The commission also extended similar gesture to a neighboring village where many bulbs were replaced with LED bulbs that consume only 3 to 9 volts. The benefiting households express appreciation for the gesture and promise to continue using the new source of light from Guso. Salamat Umar Abdullahi, NTA News. Now, promoting HIV testing is one of the critical ways of checking and managing its prevalence in the society. Musa Abukar in this report examines its importance in the society. It's a good news for Sakwata State and the Northwest region, where the 2018 Nigerian HIV AIDS indicator and impact survey showing that HIV AIDS prevalence rate is declining from 6% in 2008 to 0.4% in 2018 for Sakwata State, while the region recorded the lowest prevalence rate amongst the six geopolitical zones in the country. More interventions uh, were, were adopted that translate to reduction of this prevalence to zero to three percent in 2014. But ignoring HIV AIDS testing before marriage is still an issue of concern. HIV AIDS testing before marriage appears to be a matter of choice for many quarter state, unlike in other states where religious and traditional groups require couples to take the test as a condition before marriage. This is set to demoralize beat to combat the disease. Any person who is going to get married to take his partner to the laboratory for a HIV test, this is very, very important. Our, our, our community leaders, our traditional institutions, they should advocate for premarital screening. There is an end in sight to the prevalence rate. But community leaders must act now through collective action to promote the well-being of the society. In Sokoto, I am Musa Abubakar, NT News. Contribution from Sokoto, it's back to Joseph in Abuja. Good evening. Thank you, Sadia. Let's just bring you up to speed now on sports. Nigeria clinches first 